In the book of Isaiah, chapter 22, there is mention of the keys to the house of David. What are these keys, and how are they in relation to the keys to the kingdom of heaven found in the New Testament? Find out more on this episode of Catholic Meanings. During the time of prophet Isaiah, there reigned a king named Hezekiah. He was the 13th successor to the famous King David. While reigning, he had a steward named Shebna. Shebna was said to be over the house of the king. This meant great authority. It meant that as steward of the king, he could act on the king's behalf. Kind of like an intermediary between the king and the people. However, in Isaiah chapter 22, we see that Shebna was not a good steward, which displeased the Lord. Isaiah chapter 22 verses 17 to 19 states, Beware, the Lord is about to take firm hold of you and hurl you away, you mighty man. He will roll you up tightly like a ball and throw you into a large country. There you will die, and there the chariots you were so proud of will become a disgrace to your master's house. I will dispose you from your office, and you will be ousted from your position. It's clear that God did not like how Shebna was performing. But in the same chapter, it says who will replace him over the house. In that day I will call my servant Eliakim, the son of Hilkiah, and I will clothe him with your robe and will bind your sash on him, and I will commit your authority to his hand. And he shall be a father to the inhabitants of Jerusalem and to the house of Judah. And I will place on his shoulder the key of the house of David. He shall open and none shall shut. He shall shut and none shall open. As steward of the king, he had the keys to the house of David. The keys symbolized the power to allow people in the presence of the king. A modern comparison could see Eliakim as a sort of prime minister. So now that we know the context of these keys, let's get into how they relate to the New Testament. In the book of Matthew, we see Jesus ask Simon Peter who he says he is. And Simon Peter replies, You are the Christ, the Son of the living God. With this response, Jesus then changes Simon's name to Peter, meaning rock. And I tell you that you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. Whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. We can already see the similarities between the verses in the Old Testament and the verses in the New Testament. Just as Eliakim is given the keys to the house of David, Peter is given the keys to the kingdom of heaven. David's kingdom was seen as a prototype for God's kingdom that Jesus would establish. Just as David ruled over 12 tribes, Jesus had 12 disciples. This is why Jesus is said to sit upon the throne of David in the book of Acts. So when Jesus comes to establish his kingdom as fulfillment of the kingdom of David, he appoints his royal cabinet, his apostles. But of the apostles, he appoints his steward, the one to look after the affairs of the kingdom here on earth. When Peter is given the keys to the kingdom of heaven, it is seen as Peter becoming a sort of prime minister for the kingdom here on earth. This is why in Catholic tradition it is held that Peter is the first pope. The pope is like the steward of Christ's kingdom. He looks after the affairs here on earth. He has this authority that was given to Peter by Jesus and is passed down through apostolic succession. I hope this video gives a better understanding of how Peter is the first pope in the new fulfilled Eliakim. Thank you for watching and as always, God bless.